with a legend teasing future appearances and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on and don't forget to like the video. As Kevin Dunn had been replaced as the head of media and production by Lee Fittings, this was said regarding the production for WrestleMania 40 by Fightful Select. There was heavy praise all around for camera work. Coordination was maximum level with ringside crew, an army of set crew, pyro, lighting. Very little to no mishaps that we'd heard of. Falling his winning of the World Heavyweight title, Damian Priest shared a moment backstage with Triple H. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you for believing in me. Talking about a gift he received after the main event of WrestleMania last night, Cody Rhodes said this at the post-show press conference. I came to the back and Bruce Prichard, Triple H, and Nick Khan handed me this show's watch. It's the same watch my dad had that he pawned so I could go to acting school. The level of investment and responsibility the company just put in my hands, I hope I can pay it back, pay it forward 100 times over. Going over the backstage reaction in WWE to I Show Speed using profanities during his WrestleMania appearance, Ringside News wrote that during his appearance, I Show Speed was observed using curse words, a privilege typically reserved for a select few WWE stars. However, reports from Fightful Select indicate that the backstage reaction to I Show Speed's cursing was relatively muted. Instead, it was the comical moment when his costume cap flew into the stands that garnered laughter from those behind the scenes. Scenes. It appears an AEW star was in attendance for WrestleMania 40 last night as Ricky Starks, who is a friend of Cody Rhodes and others in the company, could be seen watching the event. Revealing that she is still looking to take on Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan said this on WWE's The Bump. I can say that I've been very, very, very strategic. I've been very, very, very patient. The Revenge Tour is very much on, and if I were you guys tonight, I'd watch me. I'm happy that Rhea won. Do you know why I'm happy she won? Because I'm going to be the one to take away everything from her. I'm very much aware of what Rhea is capable of. I'm very much aware of her greatness, but it's not going to be at the cost of my career. Also on WWE's The Bump, Jey Uso talked about the bloodline becoming baby faces down the line, saying, In all in all, I would like for us to come back together, though, as a healed up family, though. We fighting right now, but all family fight. I want us to all come back as the good guys one time and see how that works. Addressing his attack on Drew McIntyre after the opening match of WrestleMania 40 Night 2, CM Punk told ESPN, I wanted to make Drew interesting. I wanted to show him that what's important isn't on the internet. What's important is inside the building. Those people, after his two matches, yes, he had two. He won one, he lost the more important one. They were chanting CM Punk. Drew McIntyre prayed for me to be injured. He prayed for it to happen. He asked for help. He looked above and said, God, please take CM Punk out so I can main event WrestleMania 40. I don't pray for things to happen. I make them happen. I'm going to keep this up until Drew loses his mind. This is my house. I came back here to prove it. Everybody is worried about who I was, who I am now. You should worry about who I'm becoming.
when it comes to a possible change in branding for WWE, it was said that Fightful reported at least one source that Corey Brandon spoke with backed up Ebu Wrestle Pura saying that WWE has been moving away from the heavy sports entertainment branding. Showing off his body transformation, The Miz posted side-by-side -side photos and wrote this on Instagram. After all, the holidays starting in January, I set out to get myself in the best shape possible for WrestleMania. For training, my trainer Matt Blank has me on a three-day weight training workout with 30 minutes on a 10 incline treadmill going at a 3.3 pace on my off weight training days the not eating sweets and my daughter's leftovers are the hardest parts but put forth the effort and you will see the results here are mine at 43 i not only look how i want to look but i feel healthy and more energetic the changes in my workout and diet were not drastic sometimes it's the little things that make a big difference Reflecting on John Cena and The Undertaker returning at WrestleMania 40 during his match, Cody Rhodes said this on TikTok. How do you feel? With him undergoing neck fusion surgery in June, Braun Strowman gave an update on his health, telling Fanatics Live, Really good, really good, feeling good. Just waiting on that doctor to say, Go. We're right there in the home stretch. Could feel the tension in the air. So, May 1st, I got hurt. I had surgery June 1st. So I just had a CT scan back in January. The bones are very close to being fused up. So that feeling I got a metal plate and four screws in my neck now so, but it ain't gonna stop me. For an update on Matt Hardy, Ringside News noted that reports had indicated that Matt Hardy's contract was set to expire in March of this year, a fact recently confirmed by Hardy himself. Amidst this expiration, speculation arose regarding Hardy's future with AEW, with fans questioning whether he would ultimately remain with the promotion. According to reports from Sean Ross Sapp behind Fightful's paywall, it has been confirmed that Matt Hardy is now officially a free agent, having chosen not to sign the new contract offered to him by AEW. Taking to Instagram, Mick Foley revealed why he has decided to call off plans to have a final match for his 60th birthday. Hey everyone, it's Mick Foley uh, with an update on that final match that I was thinking about having for my 60th birthday. As uh, some of you know, uh, I had to miss a couple weekends of appearances because of dizziness and lightheadedness uh, after consulting a couple of doctors um, and also using my own experience with concussions. Um, the symptoms, they seem to point to a concussion uh, that I did not even know I received. I hadn't done too much in the ring, but I had done a little bit. I had noticed that I was lightheaded after one of the work at workouts, but I thought it would go away. Uh, so it just seems like the wisest move and one that's strongly supported by my family is to call off that final match. Um, if I can get concussed from something I'm not even aware of, then some of the things that I was thinking of doing an opening of doing and a big match would not be smart. So with my family's uh, urging and uh, 
after careful thought, I've decided there will be no final match. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and I hope you have a nice day. Teasing future appearances for WWE, John Cena said this on the Pat McAfee show. I'll change my shirt, but you guys know that comes with a uniform change, but last night wasn't my last night, so this doesn't mean this is my last uniform. That means that I've speculated about when I will hang up the jorts, but it wasn't last night, and I still got a little bit of rubber left on the top. I'm actively trying to craft that path now. I put a line in the sand for myself at 50, and I honestly think it's going to be before that. There is your breaking news. I'll be 47 in a few weeks. You got about a thousand days. I'll go here from working on something with Honda. I have a cool Kino appearance with Samsung in Las Vegas. The convention is, the time is now, and they called on yours truly to speak there. I'm very grateful for that. I have some more branding stuff to do before I fly to Europe to do more filming for Head of State, and straight from that to film for Peacemaker 2. That will take us through to Christmas, and I'm crossing my fingers, my toes, and my heart that maybe, just maybe, I can tell the Hollywood world to pump the brakes so I can come back to my family for one last run. Reacting to his win over AJ Styles last night, LA Knight said this during a WrestleMania XL Sunday exclusive. Let me talk to you. WrestleMania 40, WrestleMania number one for this guy. And here's how it goes down, man. AJ Styles, look, man, I ain't gonna take anything away from you. A stud, the man, bona fide stud. The man could go out there with the best of them. He's been a champion, but tonight, how it goes down, you look into these blue eyes, you catch BFT for your trouble. You catch three the hard way and that's the way it has to go down. And people would ask, well, how sweet is it? How sweet is it that it's your first WrestleMania? How sweet is it that you get to go out there just a few hours up from where you grew up? All of a sudden, everybody comes in here. What do we got? 60, 70, 80, 100,000 strong out there? I don't know, but however many it was, I could feel each and every one of them out there feeling the Kvorka of LA Knight. And what that means is a lot of trouble for anybody who's in that ring tonight. It just happened to be AJ Styles. And here's the thing, man. It was a long time coming, and at long last it came. So here's the deal. You talk about WrestleMania, you talk about LA Knight, and you got to ask yourself, whose game is it? And no doubt about it, anybody will tell you. Matter of fact, everybody will tell you LA Knight. Yeah. Mentioning when he knew it was time to head back to WWE, The Rock said at the WrestleMania 40 press conference, yes, there was. When Ari Emanuel called and said, I'm going to buy the company. Okay, what does that strategy look like? We discussed that. There was talks almost two years ago about me returning to WrestleMania 39 in Los Angeles. We thought everything was going to dovetail nicely into that great story. That didn't shake out in the way we had it anticipated and that's okay i had said back then to the people we were negotiating with maybe it's time to put the pencils down and we'll revisit when it feels right between putting the pencils down a year and a half two years ago regarding wrestlemania 39 the actuality of the selling of the company that became impetus to look holistically at doing wrestlemania 40 in philadelphia a lot of things had to come together the agreement the deal i'm not worried about that especially when the negotiations are between myself, Ari Emanuel, and Nick Khan. I wasn't concerned about the agreement. My number one priority was, can I come back and have real value this time around and not coming back for a hot shots or one night? It's fun, it's fun for the fans, but I wanted something a lot more substantial, but something we could really build upon. These past two or three months, we've been laying groundwork nicely and not only building for WrestleMania this weekend, but I think beyond that and the future.
talking about a moment from night one of WrestleMania 40, where Kyrie Sane was still in the ring when Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi were entering the ring, Mark Henry said this. Believe me, Tommy both don't understand this when I say this. And I'm saying if I was a girl and I was in that match and I get my entrance and I come in the ring and I wipe my feet and I stand and step into the ring and Kyrie saying as is still walking in the ring, I'm taking her head off. Give me the fucking ring. Yeah. I'm the guy. Like, she should have got out the fucking ring. I was so mad. I'm, I got mad again. I know. Like, See, you wouldn't know. Oh, my you God. Know. Like, you got to respect the business first. And she didn't. But she would if I would have been in the ring. As Cody Rhodes was able to finish his story and win the WWE title from Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, the band behind his theme song, Downstate, posted this to X. Kingdom is number one on the iTunes US rock charts. We will never be able to thank Cody Rhodes and all of you enough for making this happen. But thank you, and we love you. When it comes to Stephanie McMahon's return to WWE at WrestleMania the other night, Fightful Select added the Stephanie McMahon promo was kept very quiet internally and was actually listed as a Triple H promo on the run sheets. She was welcomed backstage by many and has long had a positive reputation within the company. Given the lack of involvement from Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 40, a new era seems to have commenced in WWE with ringside news writing. A seismic shift is underway in WWE as evidenced by the tone set at WWE WrestleMania 40. The messaging behind the event underscored a pivotal moment. Vince McMahon, the longtime face of the company, is no longer in the picture due to allegations of sex trafficking, harassment, and sexual assault. Importantly, there's a resounding acknowledgement that McMahon's return is not on the horizon. Recent reports, including one from Fightful Select, have highlighted the optimism surrounding WWE's first WrestleMania without the influence of Vince McMahon. Although there was a brief period from August to mid-December 2022 when McMahon stepped away, his remote contributions resumed for much of 2023. With his departure, many of the entrenched standards and rules associated with his leadership have been cast aside. Reflecting this departure from the past, there's a noticeable shift in WWE's language and approach. Ibu from WrestlePurist noted after WrestleMania that WWE sources have indicated deliberate move away from the term sports entertainment. While no official decree has been issued, sources have suggested that pro wrestling is no longer taboo, and even directives against certain language seem to fall on deaf ears. Perhaps the most significant shift is the treatment of Vince McMahon himself. WWE is actively working to distance itself from him, with strict instructions against mentioning his name on WWE programming or featuring him in archived footage whenever possible. This concerted effort to disassociate from McMahon extends to the very fabric of WWE's identity. However, while Vince McMahon is persona non grata, his daughter Stephanie McMahon remains intertwined with the company. Despite her hiatus following Vince's return to power, Stephanie made a discreet return at Survivor Series 2023 and was warmly welcomed backstage at WrestleMania. A recent appearance kept under wraps until the event sparked questions about her role in light of allegations made in Janelle Grant's lawsuit against WWE. Sources indicate their support for Stephanie within WWE, viewing her return as a public stance amid a complex situation. Although 
Stephanie's return hasn't been confirmed in a full-time capacity, multiple sources express openness to her reinstatement. Notably, the spontaneity of WrestleMania's backstage dynamics, where Bruce Prichard and Triple H found themselves unexpectedly called to the ring, underscored a departure from McMahon's modus operandi. Addressing concerns about individuals associated with Vince McMahon remaining within WWE, sources stress a philosophy of accountability and replaceability. Talent has been assured that no one is indispensable, citing past instances where key figures like McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and Kevin Dunn were absent, yet WWE flourished. This stance, endorsed by Endeavor, underscores a belief that even influential figures can be replaced if necessary. Last year's WWE Raw after WrestleMania, characterized by McMahon's tumultuous presence, stands in stark contrast to the anticipated post-WrestleMania atmosphere this year. Sources suggest that last year's show would have fared better without McMahon's involvement, foreshadowing a more enjoyable and transformative era ahead. Notably, praise has been lavished upon WWE's in-truck production, hailed as instrumental in shaping the new era. Further insights into this aspect are expected to emerge in the coming days, further underscoring WWE's evolving landscape. It appears that Vince McMahon is set to have even less stock in TKO Group Holdings, following his resignation as the chairman of the board after a sex trafficking lawsuit was leveled against him. As Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics wrote on X, new filing, TKO and Endeavor are buying shares from Vince McMahon. Into agreement, Endeavor is buying 1,642,970 shares for $142.6 million, and TKO is buying an additional 1,853,724 for about $150 million for a total of about $293 million. By my count, after the transactions close on Tuesday and Wednesday respectively, Vince will have 8,021,405 remaining TKO shares. And by my math, Vince will be down to owning about 4.7% of TKO. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all later.